In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. My friends, I welcome you here to this Saturday of the fifth week of Lent. This is the last day before we enter Holy Week with Palm Sunday tomorrow. We come aware in the midst of all this uncertainty in our own world life. Become aware that God loves us. That is indeed certain. And aware of God's love and aware of our own need for God's mercy, we acknowledge our sins. Lord Jesus, you are the friend of children and of the poor. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Word made flesh. You are the splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have made all those reborn in Christ a chosen race and a royal priesthood, grant us, we pray, the grace to will and to do what you command, that the people called to eternal life may be one in the faith of their hearts and the homage of their deeds. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We listen now to the word of God. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I will take the children of Israel from among the nations to which they have come and gather them from all sides to bring them back to their land. I will make them one nation upon the land in the mountains of Israel, and there shall be one prince for them all. Never again shall they be two nations, and never again shall they be divided into two kingdoms. No longer shall they defile themselves with their idols, their abominations, and all their transgressions. I will deliver them from all their sins of apostasy, and cleanse them, so that they be, may be my people, and I may be their God. My servant David shall be prince over them, and there shall be one shepherd for them all. They shall live by my statutes and carefully observe my decrees. They shall live on the land that I gave to my servant Jacob, the land where their fathers lived. They shall live on it forever, they and their children and their children's children, with my servant David, their prince forever. I will make with them a covenant of peace. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them, and I will multiply them and put my sanctuary among them forever. My dwelling shall be with them. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Thus the nation shall know that it is I, the Lord, who make Israel holy, when my sanctuary shall be set up among them forever. The word of the Lord. Today's responsorial psalm is, The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations. Claim it on distant isles and say, He who scattered Israel now gathers them together. He guards them as a shepherd his flock. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. The Lord shall ransom Jacob. He shall redeem him from the hand of his conqueror, shouting, they shall mount the heights of Zion. They shall come streaming to the Lord's blessings, the grain, the wine, and the oil, the sheep, and the oxen. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. Then the virgin shall make merry and dance, and young men and old as well, I will turn their mourning into joy. I will console and gladden them after their sorrows. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock.
Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Cast away from you all the crimes you have committed, says the Lord, and make for yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what Jesus had done began to believe in him. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. So the chief priests and the Pharisees convened the Sanhedrin and said, What are we going to do? This man is performing many signs. If we leave him alone, all will believe in him. And the Romans will come and take away both our land and our nation. But one of them, Caiaphas, who was a high priest that year, said to them, You know nothing, nor do you consider that it is better for you that one man should die instead of the people, so that the whole nation may not perish. He did not say this on his own, but since he was high priest for that year, he prophesied that Jesus was going to die for the nation. And not only for the nation, but also to gather into one the dispersed children of God. So from that day on, they planned to kill him. So Jesus no longer walked about in public among the Jews, but he left for the region near the desert to a town called Ephraim, and there he remained with his disciples. Now the Passover of the Jews was near, and many went up from the country to Jerusalem before Passover to purify themselves. They looked for Jesus and said to one another as they were in the temple area, What do you think? That he will not come to the feast? The Gospel of the Lord. Oh, the high priests, the Pharisees, the Sanhedrin, didn't they allow their hearts to be filled with jealousy? And didn't that jealousy move them to do what we're about to experience? in another way next week. Didn't their jealousy move them to want to kill him, to trap him? Many began to believe in him because of the good things that he did because of what he did with Martha and Mary and Lazarus, many came to believe in him, and then the authorities became jealous of him. I think as we come together today and we remember what we're about to enter into in this Holy Week that starts tomorrow, we can look at our own hearts and our own lives as we prepare to celebrate the Paschal Mystery, are we believers? It's tempting to question, especially during these difficult days, to question and to wonder, to judge. Are we believers? Or do other things get in the way of our putting our trust 
and faith in the one who came to die for the people. Did our anger get in the way? Our own jealousy and lack of recognition of the many ways that Jesus blesses us. He does indeed bless us. He is indeed with us, even in the midst of this time of COVID-19. Even though this Holy Week is promised to be celebrate, celebrated in a very different way, even though when we celebrate the victory over death Jesus has at Easter, we'll be in our home celebrating remotely. We're invited to trust. To get rid of all those other things, envy and jealousy and anger, judgment, get rid of those things so that the love and the power of Christ can enter our hearts. And as the love and power of Christ enters our hearts, my friends, we will endure. We will hold fast and hold firm. We will live as missionary disciples, even in our own way. We can live as missionary disciples, even in this short time, hopefully short time, that we'll continue in this confinement, this shelter at home. We can be disciples using modern technology with phone calls and texts, and even within our own family, we can spread the good news. We can, as the friends of Mary and Lazarus and Martha, believe, and in our belief, live. Having heard God's holy word, stand with me now and Pray for our needs, the needs of the church and of the world. Let's pray for our church as we prepare to celebrate the holiest week of the year in a very different way. Let's pray that we may stay focused on what is true and real and believe in the power of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's pray for peace, for an end to racism, an end to senseless violence, for respect for life in all its stages. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all those who are working on the front lines, keeping us safe and keeping us healthy, our first responders here in Wilmette and beyond, all those doctors and nurses and caregivers, that they may be guided by the Holy Spirit, kept safe and healthy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's pray for those who are ill. And especially we pray for the thousands who are experiencing the effects of this COVID-19, that they may be swiftly healed. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's pray for those who have died and those who mourn them, that the dead may be sharing in the glory of God and those who are mourning may be comforted by God and by us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the intentions for this Mass, we pray for Bill Gary, for Hannah McNulty, for Bill Kosarek, for Lisa Pat, for Briar Johnston. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for showing us that you love us, and we ask that you hear and answer us according to your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, this is the time of the preparation of the altar. It's the time where 
We offer to God the gifts that we have as we come together today. I invite you to consider your gifts to our parish and to the poor right under your screen. After Mass, perhaps, you can click on that link and sign up for electronic giving to support our wonderful community and to support the poor that God entrusts to our care. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine. We offer you fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that this your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Amen. May the gifts we offer from our fasting be acceptable to you, O Lord, we pray. And as an expiation for our sins, may they make us worthy of your grace and lead us to what you promise for eternity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just that we should give you thanks and praise, O God, Almighty Father, for all you do in this world through our Lord Jesus Christ. For though the human race is divided by dissension and discord, yet we know that by testing us you change our hearts and prepare them for reconciliation. Even more, your spirit moves human hearts, that enemies speak to each other again, adversaries join hands, and people seek to meet together. By the working of your power, it comes about, O Lord, that hatred is overcome by love, revenge gives way to forgiveness, and discord is changed to mutual respect. Therefore, as we give you ceaseless thanks with the choirs of heaven, we cry out to your majesty on earth, and without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You therefore, almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you to sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life, to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many.
for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you've bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also, together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, the clergy and the religious, and all who serve your church. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, St. Francis Xavier, and all the saints, and with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. My friends, offer peace to those with whom you are sharing this Mass. Offer peace in the silence of your heart. Pray for peace in our troubled globe. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My friends, I invite you now, with a prayer in your own heart, to unite with me in this spiritual communion, Jesus truly present in the body and blood of Christ, truly present in the Eucharist, is here for you, to strengthen you, to sustain you, to give you health. Make your spiritual communion. As I receive our Lord, I pray for you.
Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. My friends, just a, a word of thanks for joining the last half of Lent uh, electronically. So many of you have joined for Mass. I think it's great. I look forward to the day that we're all back together again in, in our churches. Both of them will fill them be filled with joy. We'll experience the joy of the resurrection together. We pray for a swift end to this virus. Pray for all those who are affected. So thanks for joining. Continue to pray. Look forward for, to more ways that we will be offering spiritual enrichment, either via our YouTube channel or via other electronic opportunities. Father Matt and his team are working hard on finding good ways to connect spiritually over uh, the next several weeks, which it sounds like we might be spending together electronically. Remember I'm here for you. Remember I love you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Have mercy, Lord, on your church as she brings you her supplications and be attentive to those who incline their hearts before you. Do not allow, we pray, those you have redeemed by the death of your only begotten Son to be harmed by their sins or weighed down by their trials. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord with our lives. My life flows on in endless song above earth's lamentation. I hear the clear though far off hymn that hails a new creation. No storm can shake my inmost calm While well, to that rock I'm clinging Since love is Lord of heaven and earth How can I keep from singing? Through all the tumult and the strife I hear that music ringing, it finds an echo in my soul, how can I keep from singing? No storm can shake my inmost calm, while to 